Every April, the Merseyrail station at Aintree in North Liverpool sees large numbers of passengers for the annual Grand National Race Meeting. But in the years 2020 and 2021, those passengers have been absent due to the restrictions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. In normal times, vast numbers would safely pass through the station during the race meeting. This is all down to the dedicated and efficient way the Merseyrail staff handled this annual event. The first station at Aintree was opened by the East Lancashire Railway in 1849, on their line from Preston to Liverpool. This picture shows the first station buildings at Aintree. The line was later absorbed by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway 10 years later, and the station rebuilt. The original entrance to the station is here on Park Lane. It had three platforms, the main Liverpool to Preston through platforms, and a platform for terminating trains over the North Mersey branch. A horse dock was also provided alongside the platforms. One of the main features of the Lancashire and Yorkshire station was the large overall canopy over the Liverpool bound platform, this providing plenty of shelter for homeward bound racegoers. The facilities on the Preston bound platform were spartan by comparison. No doubt far more would be travelling back towards Liverpool after the races than in the Preston direction. The second station at Aintree came on the 13th of July 1880 on the Cheshire Lands Committee North Liverpool Extension. The Cheshire Lands Committee named it Aintree Racecourse as initially it was a terminus that only operated on race days. This was also on Park Lane, just a short distance from the Lancashire and Yorkshire station. The Lancashire and Yorkshire later renamed their station Aintree Sefton Arms after the nearby pub. The Cheshire Lines Committee line meanwhile was extended to Southport Lord Street in 1884 and the station renamed Aintree. The five platforms of the Cheshire Lines Aintree may seem excessive, but they were there to cope with the race day traffic. Around 1890 a third Aintree station was in operation, though only on race days. This station was situated on the 1866 North Mersey branch, on the embankment over Warbreck Moor. Initially called Cinder Lane, it was later renamed Entry Racecourse Station, not to be confused with the earlier Cheshire Lines Committee Station. The platform at this station was little more than a raised section of line infilled with cinders. Only one track was in use during the day of the race. All trains in Entry were steam hauled until the Lancashire and Yorkshire began their programme of electrification on their lines out of Liverpool Exchange. Starting with the Southport line in 1904, electrification had reached entry by 1906 via the North Mersey branch and also via the direct route through Kirkdale. One of these early electrics is seen here, having travelled via the North Mersey line. This unusual looking train is one of the early Grand National Specials laid on by the Lancashire and Yorkshire. It consists of two electric motor coaches with old six wheeled steam stock coupled in between. One can only guess at what today's health and safety would make of this ensemble. The 1866 North Mersey line was mostly a freight line, and a vast gridiron marshalling yard was constructed at Aintree to cope with the goods traffic emanating from the port. Alongside the Aintree iron was a motive power depot to provide the many steam locos required to haul the goods to and from the port. Opened by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway in 1886, this steam shed, later coded 8L, also service locos bringing in Grand National Specials. Occasional mishaps would sometimes occur. This electric, for example, couldn't decide which line to take. Other trains making regular visits to Aintree joined the Grand National with the units from the Liverpool Overhead Railway. Here we see some of these yearly visitors from the early years through to the last visit in 1956. Regular electric services over the North Mersey line had ceased in 1951. 
very few photos of electric trains over the North Mersey have come to light, though we see a few here around Aintree Shed. One very unusual electric to frequent the North Mersey and the marshalling yards is Lancashire and Yorkshire Loco No. 1. Built in 1912, this could operate both on third rail and overhead catenary. The Loco was built on a short bunker 242 tank frame. It wasn't a great success however, and saw very little use, being eventually scrapped in 1922. Another unusual local to visit entry is this fireless local that ran over the short branches of the British Anchor Works, later Court Halls. The long disused bridge into the works still exists today. With the nationalisation of the railways in 1948, the Cheshire Lines Committee Station was renamed Entry Central, but the rundown of the railways at Entry started early. In 1952, the former Cheshire Lines Committee service to Southport was cut back to Aintree Central, and by the start of the 60s less and less freight would be seen on the Aintree Iron. Then 1960 saw the end of passenger trains from Aintree Central to Gatica, and the station is closed. The site of the station is now an industrial estate, the road into it called Deltic Way. Aintree Racecourse Station was last used in 1961, and officially closed in 1962. The 1963 beaching cuts had threatened both the Southport and Wigan via cable lines with closure, but the line from Liverpool to Preston was to be spared. The electric trains on this line were to be replaced by diesel units. However, in the end the electric stayed and the Southport and Wigan lines remained open. In 1967 the steam shed at Aintree was closed. Though it wasn't demolished until 1996, 29 years after closure. A new housing estate now occupies the site. During these times there were many enthusiast tours. The large signal box here, Entry Station Junction, dated from 1875 with the Saxby and Farmer frame. It was extended in 1906 and at its height had 88 levers. Among the points and signals it controlled was this unusual cutback signal arm, erected such due to the cramped location. The year 1968 was to see the very last scheduled British Steam Hall service pass through entry. Originating from Glasgow, it was steam hauled from Preston to Liverpool by Black 5 45318. By the start of the 1970s, the three Preston trains were no more and Aintree Sefton Arms was renamed and became just Aintree. During this period, the station started to look a little run down. Freight did continue to such places as the metal box factory and Fazakley sidings, whilst the gridiron was rebuilt into the Aintree container depot. Now, even all this has disappeared. The widening of Park Lane saw the demolition of the original booking office, and the station as a whole was completely rebuilt. The new booking office opening on the 27th of October 2000. Hopefully, the visitors at the Grand National will all return by 2022. 
and once again the crowds will throng the platforms both to and from a real grand day out.